welcome back here to Liquid Lunch. It's Hugh. I finally made it. I made it down from Brampton. Oh, thank you know, lovely to see you, Hugh. It's been a while since we've been here together, hasn't it? It's great. I can't believe yeah. Oh, Daniel Katz yes. is still in the building. Yes. He could participate if he wants, but... Uh, Yes, stick around, Daniel, fun. and it was lovely co-hosting with you for the first part of the show. So, and Rose, I'm really glad I'm here, and uh, we've got a special guest uh, on the Skype from Brazil, right? We have a very special guest with us today, uh, Toku Lopsang, who is currently in Brazil, yes, and we're Skyping him in, and we're going to talk today about his first ever visit to Toronto, coming up on August 1st and 2nd, which is a real uh, honor and privilege for us in Toronto. And uh, I can't wait to, to meet him in person. Uh, what should we do here about full disclosure? Well, should I? I? I don't know. Let's not do anything. <laughs> oh. Let's be like Rob Ford. Oh. oh! We'll wait for the video That's to come out. Oh, Rose. yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, to toku Lopsang is a, is a toku, which I'm going to ask you to explain what that is, uh, Toku Lopsang. And he is a master of Tantrayana, which is a branch of uh, Buddhism. And I'm going to ask you to explain to the listening audience as well what that is, just so that they have a little bit of a background information before we get into more details about the Toronto event, or for that matter, anything else we'd like to discuss here today. So, Toku Lapsang, what is a Toku? <laughs> yes, uh, Toku means uh, in the Tibetan language what we call Yes, Turku is means is a reincarnation. It's a reincarnation. We believe the the some of the masters to past uh, past way and then they reincarnate back and the purposely to do their continue helps uh, uh, all of the sentient beings. I think that's his meaning of Turku is mean reincarnation but we all have a reincarnation but a little different than uh turkos because we are all to born or birth without a control and we believe the masters who have a title of the turkos they are born with the control they are born with the purposely very interesting and having been uh, born as a turku come into life as a turku were you always aware of that? Did you do you is do you still have to pass through the veil of forgetfulness like the rest of us, or uh, does somebody have to tell you that you are a toku? Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's it's depend some some turkus is there complete remember everything. I mean, many things remember. Or maybe they, they don't remember complete. They become very family or uh, subject or things. But some trukus they don't remember. You know, zero sometimes. Or only there maybe example they remember after 20 years or 30 years. Or sometimes they have a case the some trukus only remember before they're dead. Maybe you say me is the reincarnation of a master this and that. But I only remember before I die. And the whole my rest of whole my life, I don't remember. Therefore, it's each uh, Turkus leader have a different stu uh, cases. Uh, yes. Yes, that, that's very interesting. And I wonder uh, how life would be for a Turku who wouldn't, who doesn't consciously remember he's a Turku. But in your in your case, you were recognized uh, by somebody from the outside when you were still young. Is that correct? That's very correct. And when this was brought to your attention or to your family's attention, did you immediately embrace it? Yes. Uh, one, uh, one, I'm, a, one, I'm very young. It's a six, uh, what's a six or seven years old. I'm already in the monastery and uh, I have all general basic education, some study. Then when I'm uh, 
13 years old. Uh, this uh, I'm a, when I'm 13 years old, and they uh, what say recognize or me is the reincarnation of a Nyense master. Is eight the reincarnation of Nyense master. Is uh, maybe you know we have uh, in our Tibetan tradition what we have oracle is uh, very famous. And one of the, our oracles in our monastery. And he told me is the reincarnation of this master. First he told, but then I need to go many steps to I need to prove to I'm a reincarnation of this master. And the whole oracle system in Tibet is very fascinating, and that could be that's a whole other show for another time. But uh, once you were told that you were a toku, did you then remember? Did, did, did yeah, and, and, and did you remember, and how did you feel, did it feel right to you that, that they <laughs> came to you and said you are a reincarnated uh, Tibetan master? Did it feel, did that feel accurate, or was it a sort of a surprise? I, I be honestly, I don't really, I remember it's the first time one woman, because I, uh, I'm not to want in this uh, ceremony place, it's the only me is who not to want in the ceremony place. And the rest, everybody went. But uh, one woman, I remember that time, just not officially, one woman just told me, you are reincarnation of uh, the Nyense master, and the very important master. And the all around my people, is they're just kind of a shock, and they're not moved, they stand. But I, I only remember this. <laughs> the rest, I don't remember really well. <laughs> But uh, I mean, I feel like I'm feeling connected. But you, you ask me is I remember my past life. But uh, this uh, question I used to never give really answer because uh, that's a really tricky question. Because uh, I say yes, it's not make sense. I say no, also that's not uh, make sense. They are not uh, give answer really myself personally. When you were. Uh taught, you were then taken to the monastery and you began a course of formal study, is that correct? That's uh, very correct. And it seems as though you've mastered many subject matter. I know you're the director, the founder and director of Nangten Menlang, Tibetan, uh, medical, Tibetan Medical Buddhist Association, if I have that, uh, if I got that right. And Correct. you're a, a renowned doctor of Tibetan medicine and also a, uh, in Tibetan astrology. And you've mastered many things, it seems, but you've chosen to focus on uh, tra ta the Tantrayana healing arts. Very correct. Yeah. Because in the Buddhism, we have a Theravada Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, and Tantrayana Buddhism, and, but especially Tantrayana Buddhism is uh, very much connected to Tibet medicine. When you really start, you know very well, you really well study Tantrayana, you must need to understand the body system, how it functions. Therefore, this is a connect medicine. Therefore, I receive all this kind of a knowledge. Not only I receive all this kind of knowledge, but my personally, I like especially uh, the body works through over body, do something. Therefore, I also passed many years to more focus in the Tantrayana practices myself, also learnings more and to practice. And therefore, that's also I'm focused to teaching because that's very much connect medicine. And then I think many Western people need this, uh, this kind of time and the health and the happiness advices. Yes. Yes, we definitely all need <laughs> happiness, <laughs> and I and and I think yeah, that's a wonderful approach for the West to go through the body, and maybe for maybe not only in the West, but maybe anywhere, but definitely in yes. the West. So, what is it exactly? Let's talk about exactly what is this practice, uh, because uh, I've never heard of it before. So. Uh, we, we've got the master right yeah. here to explain, and I suppose, uh, Tulku Lapsang, uh, there are many practices you do, but you'll be coming to Toronto for the very first time on August the 1st and 2nd. We're so delighted and honored to have you here, and uh, I don't know if you'd like to talk about the practices you'll be teaching here, or would you like to talk about what you teach in general? 
Oh, yes, whatever we possible is to talk is mainly example. The, uh, I think we come into Toronto, we teach in the, the first step of uh, some of the Tantrayana or techniques, what we call Lujong, and together is Zalong. It's Lujong means uh, is the some body exercise and with uh, holding the, your breath. And uh, means, and we are in Tantrayana Buddhism, so we believe we have 72,000 different channels have in our body. And each day we are naturally lose one or two channels. And that's how we become old. That's how we become sick. That's how we come to die. But with these practices and the help is uh, the whatever channels block and the breaks to trees to make more flowing and make more open and more function because your channels block and the uh, break then your energy not flowing when you not energy is flowing then we call inner fire or inner warmness is uh, uh, come less or reducing and this inner warmness start reducing then what we and the, what we call essence maybe is look like very near hormone and then, then our hormones is come to freeze. And that's where our brain and our mind is also look like become old. But mind usually never become old. But because of body start going old, and the mind is look like become old. We teach in the, I think, Tor Toronto is the method to how open the channels and the uh, to chakras and how to make flow in this energy, keep more healthy and happy and also some people want deep meditation practices and that is the best way to learn to higher concentration. You mean by opening these channels, by engaging in this uh, Lu Zhang and uh, Cao Lung practice, let's say, the channels are restored eventually over time and that then as a consequence helps one to deepen uh, their meditational practice? Exactly. In the Tantrayana Buddhism, we, we, we try to do this way. You see, this really is look very, very, very complex. But uh, first, we try to open all of our chakras channels and uh, chakras channels. And to do this, we need first some physical exercises. Then we need to breath exercises. Then we need some kind of visualizations. Maybe you hear very famous uh, uh, inner fire and thus make to your really deep deep some kind of openings coming and that then deep opening especially I mean deep chakras opens especially in the crown chakra is maybe look like a brain and when you open this before your life never open this never open you open this and the brain or this crown chakra start to producing some kind of a hormone or some kind of a chemical uh, to producing and this go in the nerves, in your nerves, one does go in your nerves and you have their sensation of a bliss. This name Tantrayana called love and the bliss. Is you feel this bliss in your whole of your body, then bliss coming higher and higher and higher, and then your what say thoughts slowly, thoughts automatically reducing and reducing, and then only bliss left. And the bliss is just full of the awareness, but without stop thinking, you don't need to think. And that is the way to hire some meditation practice. That is the, the deep goal of Tantrayana. But together, and they also be possible uh, to, we have benefit of the health and the happiness. But main higher goal, this higher level of the concentration or meditation, yes. Wow. I have a question. Mm. I know Dan's got <laughs> Dan's know still that. here too. Dan's got a question. But here's my question, Talku, because you mentioned that um, we have 72,000 channels, I think you said, and that this practice uh, enables you to, to maintain them or maybe even restore them if you've lost a few of them, and that uh, losing them is, is how we get old and this is how we die. My question is, if we use this practice and we maintain our 72,000 channels does that mean we can live longer does that mean because we hear stories i don't know if they're myths or not about people in the east in tibet in northern india who 
might live to be thousands of years old. I'm wondering, is it possible, theoretically, with this practice to uh, significantly extend your lifespan? Yes, is I mean, be, uh, it's really possible in our authentic teachings in the monastery and still we teach, but I'm honestly, I don't know who lives such a long, but <laughs> logically it's possible. Uh, example, you need to practice. That means you really need to practice the highest level. Example, you practice the holding the breath. And then you, when you hold the breath, and but you need with the special technique, otherwise no good health, also very dangerous. And then you, example, you hold your breath without any effort six months. And then your body structure completely change. Not only you not only go to go old, you possibly become young. Therefore, I'm always hope. I'm sure uh, one day we found, uh, you know, um, one day we find this kind of uh, method to also do this. This is a possible, but that is not really goal of the, this practice. But this is uh, really much uh, uh, possible. Make you keep. Uh, younger or to go back because in the, all your body way of the walking is a change then body start to move in different direction they have many stories not only stories but official authentic teachings we have those yes uh, just to clarify did you say six months holding the breath without effort? yes is that what you said that's what i thought you said <laughs> yes, yes 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 i yes, have a yes. way to go I, I i'm not even at six minutes not not even close to six minutes <laughs> I, I mean we uh, we are example the beginners we try to look like uh, beginners or look like me or look like yours we first uh, try to make a reach three minutes then we try to reach six minutes. Then we try to reach nine minutes. Nine minutes is the is we are normal people. Is the one of the highest one. Then you need a special training your mind. And the yogis, their shots one they keep breath one day and the six month three month to six month, and means that you keep your breath so long. I think also your heart is stopped. Uh, and you, yeah. you exactly look like you're dead, but you didn't dead. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, I think it's... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, okay. okay. Well, Everybody long, has questions. Tolku Lam yes. saying, how long can you hold your breath for? I think it's me, it's uh, possible nine minutes around. Wow. Yes, oh, sometimes right. it's come less, sometimes it's come depend on my practice. I possibly reach around the nine minutes. I'm not so, so good practitioner. I'm a very motivated this part, but you know, it's who really devote whole life to practice this, who stay in the remote area in the Himalaya mountains, you know, and the sum of masters, uh, yes, is uh, possible. Not only I think is a Buddhism masters possible, I think some Hindu masters also possible, I think, yes. That is kind of not only Buddhism practice, it's kind of a common practice, I think so. But what you're really saying is that it's not really the goal of these practices in the everyday life to, you know, to gain immortality or to, to be able to not breathe for six months. It's we're, we're practicing in order to... Uh, open, restore the body, or even bring it to its full potential, and undo some damage that has been done, and so that the lives that we do live can be fuller and more meaningful and more centered. Yes, I mean, you know, it's, this is uh, the, all the Buddhism's techniques, and we have a temporary goal, and uh, come, uh, what's the absolute goal? Temporary goal, we come need a healthier, we come more long life, we come more happier, but absolute goal in the Buddhism is what we believe enlightened man. Mm. Until you're not enlightened, you know everything is just a temporary uh, success. It's, they don't have absolute success. Therefore, the, 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 the Buddhism we believe have become enlightened. That is the, 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 what's a, the what's a final goal. But uh, and they also have temporary goals to come more healthier, happier, long life, all those things. Yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> Back to the 72,000 channels in the body. Have those actually been mapped, or was that knowledge gained intuitively by somebody way back when? Uh, yes, uh, I think it's example. In the channels we have, uh, we have uh, some channels is really exist in the, our body in the physically, but some channels not exist. Only we visualize. Example: the chakras, the channels. So what we visualize, this is um, just to help you visualize, but this is not exactly exist. But um, no more is. The, the, the normal channels, what we have, example, the, in Tantrayana, we say mother channel and the central, uh, sorry, mother channel, right channel, left channel. What mean? I think uh, uh, right channel means our uh, our wings. Mother channel means our arteries. And then uh, left channel means is our nerves. You know, that is really when we put in the, our physical, but when we meditate, when we visualize, we, we, we paint in a very uh, special way, but what we paint exactly not exists in our body. But this helps your meditation uh, to go to better, to energy flowing in your channels. Thank you so much. Uh, another thing that I found very interesting was the uh, Tibetan view of uh, chakras versus channels. And after this, maybe we'll talk more specifically about the Toronto events. But it's it's hard it's hard not to ask all these questions. There, <laughs> yes, it's a very interesting view uh, Tibetan Buddhism has of chakras versus channels. The chakras aren't necessarily viewed in the same way. Uh, you're, they're viewed more as energy blockages, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yes. It's uh, 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 yes. It's sometimes chakra means uh, is uh, where is the energy block, or it also means chakra means where is the uh, door. It's look like a secret door of the body. You know, mm. is chakra means a secret door of the body. Example: We have a sexual chakra, navel chakra. Heart chakra, throat chakra, crown chakra. Mostly, sexual chakra is the most easy door. Means most easy open. Therefore, the in through of this chakras where they have a points. Points is most important. This points your focus and you reach more deep part of your mind uh, than other part of a body. Chakra means is I think sacred door. Okay. Where's this point? <laughs> the one that opens the sexual chakra. <laughs> Hugh. I'm just asking because that's what everybody wants to know. Right, Dan? <laughs> Let's see if he answers. <laughs> Hugh, did you want to uh, break for a moment to put the video on? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, talk uh, to Lob saying. Uh, Dan, do you, did you have a question before we break to the video that um, you, you want to ask? I, I'm a bit of a Shatsu practitioner. Uh, I guess there's an overlap between the channels uh, that you're talking about and, and uh, the meridians and Shatsu. Are you aware of, uh, of uh, the difference or the, uh, the differences or the uh, similarities between the Channels, meridians, and shiatsu, and and the channels that you're 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 talking about. Yeah, yeah is uh, I think that is very much uh, connect in the one you study in Tantrayana Buddhism. You also study all this uh, the points and also in the Tibet medicines. But I think is uh, what we in the talking in the medicine and the shiatsu or this uh, kind of. Uh, uh, the points is we call the Tibetan language is what we call some means a secret point something look like this and the Tantrayana we call chakras but in the all of the the chakras in the in the your in through of your spine is more connect emotions all of the chakras is a connect your legs and the arms and the different part more connect the diseases we call but however is the where is the uh, the 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 one? Uh, where is the secret? Where is a block? Example: I have a problem in the heart or something. Then in the my spine number six in the way of the Tibetan co co count in number six in the 
there is a block point. Therefore, for example, I push there, I have a pain. If I have a problem in my heart, they have, then you give, because there is the energy, your, your tension you keep, and the blood or energy uh, not flow, and then you give their pressure or acupuncture or golden needle or pressure or warm or massage, anything, then the energy start to flow, and, and then this come in more help, uh, what say, come healthier, uh, better, but I, yes, that's something good, local. That's okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay, okay. yeah, that was so, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we just watch the video, and I'm sure that'll give us lots more to think about, and some uh, more questions we'll want to ask afterwards. This is the video that uh, they sent us. So yes. We watch that, and uh, Telku Lob saying, just bear with us. We're going to play the video now, and we'll and come back and Can I give a little this. intro to the video? Yes. Uh, Telku Lob Sang, this is a video clip, I believe, of you practicing the wisdom sword. Todd, Todd Chud, if I, if I have that correct. And Correct. yes, and and this yes. is a this is a practice that you yourself developed, if I understand but correctly. Is yes, very correct. Yeah, and uh, I believe we're going to try to uh, put some music of you singing. I'm not sure uh, we're oh, able. Oh, we don't to we alter don't know soundtrack. that we can do that. Oh, we don't know that we can alter the soundtrack. Well, we'll see you doing your magic with the wisdom sword and after that break we'll come back and discuss the Toronto events more specifically. Thank you. Thank you.
beauty and grace and strength and discipline. Uh, did, did you, sorry, Tolku, did you hear me just now? Or, yes, or, yes, 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 yes. That was, that was beautiful. A picture of grace, beauty, discipline, strength. Daniel was commenting that it looked like, uh, you know, the equivalent of a black belt uh, yeah. and, and, you know, but so much more. Can you tell us just a, a, a small bit of, about the purpose of that, of that practice? Um, in uh, when I travel in the Western world, uh, what I really discover people have uh, lack of uh, self-esteem and the self, uh, yeah, lack of a self-esteem, and they always need to think so much. They're not always ready to decide, and you know that's what I see. I mean, full of the fear, therefore. And then, and then you know, I develop a uh, base of the Western uh, problems. Develop this exercise is uh, the the some of the, our traditional uh, exercise. I put the base, and then I put to this uh, top of this. Uh, mainly, the philosophy of this exercise is something look like this. I always say in say. Outside of yourself, there no have any enemy. You are your own absolute enemy. And then we say there another sentence we say is uh, fear is a demon. Expectation is your enemy. Fear is your demon. Therefore, in this exercise, you try to reduce in of your what say fear and expectations and also this is a way to be more calm and to befriend yourself and to settle down yourself, yes. It's a beautiful practice, a little bit more advanced, I gather, a little bit more advanced. Maybe you can give us a little demo when you're here. Yeah, Rose doesn't know how to do that yet. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Toku Lapsang, I don't, I don't know if you know. I don't know if I can say this on air. Why not? Uh, yes, I'm going to be one of the first uh, Canadian certified teachers in the Lu Zhong. I've just uh, taken part one of the teacher training in, uh, in upstate New York. And it's, it's wonderful. It's an absolutely wonderful practice and I'm so excited to be able to bring that to people and thank you so much for developing that the, the that series of movements and you were saying earlier in the introduction that Lu Zhong means body and training so it's that's a, a, a fairly generic term right so when we uh, say we practice Lu Zhong do we have to be more specific for instance uh, I practice Lu Zhong in the lineage of so and so because that would be a specific Lu Zhong, a specific mm. series of movements. Yes, because uh, 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 Lu Zhong is we have uh, in Tantrayana Buddhism we have maybe around fifty different lineages have, but they have main big big lineages is four or five where his monastery is still practice. But they only give this purpose of to higher uh, realizations or higher meditations, not to really have everybody. But it's sometimes the exercises is very heavy. It's sometimes normal people also difficult to do. Then I'm, when I think 21 or 22 years old, when I'm Dharamsala, where is the Dalai Lama stay. And then there I start to thinking all the Lujong's different, uh, what's the Lujong's, which ones is most easy, which one is more benefit to normal people, and everybody somehow to possible practice. I collect those exercises, then also something inside little uh, dangerous or something, a little modify, very, very little modify, but then I'm collect, therefore this is little, uh, maybe uh, especially of the also Turkulovzang, but I don't make a big change, but I am collect all easy exercises, more connect and health and to everybody something possible to because it's a traditional exercises is so hard is you really need a strong bodies. 
is nearly impossible. Therefore, maybe you possible call leader uh, specially of Turk Lobes on Orso. Can yeah. I? Yeah. Can yes. you can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you're that, good, Dan. Okay, my question to you is that there is a lot of this is a form of yoga, right? That uh, that the yoga out here, a lot of it uh, is misconstrued as um, uh, exercise uh, to uh, uh, for achievement of a, of, of a, a pretzel posture to be a super flexible person or super strong, and sometimes people miss the point of what the yoga was in the first place. Um, are you aware of uh, that um, misconstrued uh, uh, interpretation of yoga here in the West? Yes, yes, I really much, un yes, that's what I, uh, what I, I understand. I'm used to say now many in the uh, teachers, my, uh, my students, example also, in the this exercise, uh, because sometimes people you want you teach in the people, and then they are focused to become flexible. But uh, example goal of the lujong, I'm sure also yoga. Uh, uh, the goal of the lujong not to become flexible, because you are flexible. That's not mean you are healthy also. That's the reason. Is the this uh, the, sorry uh, the, the the goal of the lujong exercise not to become flexible is because flexible means not to be not to mean you're healthy. Not only this, sometimes you to become flexible exercise no possible reach your body. Then exercise no help you. That's the reason you need exercise always leader changing. And not only changing your exercise, your exercise always need some movement and don't be one position always. You be one position always, then your body does uh, adapt and then after this not uh, reach your body, does not reach your body and then they now have a big, big benefit. Therefore, that's I'm very much where I always used to say people does. Toku Lapsang, Sorry, Daniel, no, did no, you want to? No, okay, no. yeah, that was very interesting, wasn't it? That was a, a, an interesting point of view about how flexibility isn't always, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean health. It doesn't right, mean right. health or... So for the, uh, for the basic Lujong practice, the five elements practice, which is what you'll uh, be teaching here in Toronto on August the 2nd, that is the foundational practice, kind of an underpinning of all the other uh, body movement practices that you teach, isn't it? It's correct, very correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, for myself, just addressing the point you made that you, you went around synthesizing movements from all these different lineages to find something that everybody could do uh, that was something that I personally had been having difficulty with because I'd been injured in a car accident a long time ago now, 10 years ago, but I've still never been able to recover, to actually pick up a physical practice. And this Lu Zhang is the first, it's the first after 10 years. I, I do have to do it carefully, but that's what I love about it. Uh, you get into the proper position and you do it to the ability you can, and it's a, a, a huge benefit. And for me, I can tell, I feel better after every practice, actually. Who, who? Sorry, well, Rose, you told me that this is in terms of a very simple practice that doesn't take a lot of time that anybody can do and get themselves in great physical health well i mean it's it's a, uh you know it's it's a great foundational practice and it's very comprehensive so that in only uh, a few minutes a day they say ultimately 12 minutes i still take a little bit longer but it doesn't matter even if it's 15 or 20 that's not very much 
you balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain. You, uh, by having the combination of form and movement, you have a little bit of breath work in there. You have a, a little bit of a moving meditation. And you balance the five elements in the body. So that's pretty efficient for uh, a practice, a 12-minute practice. And uh, Toku Lapsang, in your view, who is the uh, ideal person to practice Lu Zhang? Uh, what do you mean? Well, who should practice it? Let's say if people already have, uh, they already have uh, their fitness routines set up, can they still benefit? Yes, 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 yes. So, yes, what I saw and now example in the. Europe, we have uh, nearly 1,000 Lujong teachers, nearly we have, who teach everywhere and uh, also in the hospitals and also sometimes yoga people, I mean, uh, who have a very flexible bodies and all kind of people is uh, practicing and also old and uh, it's not so flexible. Really, everybody is when they do this, is kind of a have a benefit. I'm also surprised one time some of the yoga uh, practitioners because they're very, very flexible sometimes. And therefore, but they did in the, the example, especially five element, and they say they feel very much. I think because of movement, and then they reach more in the in the, your deep part of the body. I think so, yeah. That means uh, all kind of people possible, yes? Yes. So let's talk about because you're coming to Toronto in August, and let's talk about what's going to happen there. And people watching, they may be intrigued and they may want to come out. And let's talk a little bit about what you're going to be teaching specifically when you come to Toronto in August. So August 1st, which is a Thursday, there will be a public talk. And the uh, theme of the talk, as far as I know, is using the power of change. Koko Lapsang. Yes. And this talk is uh, it's a standalone event. It's, not, it's something separate than the workshop that's offered the next day. Uh, so what can people hope to learn from the talk on Thursday? Yeah. I'm used to uh, people say the power of a change. You know, usually it's... Uh, uh, change is the one i mean change or or the is change is the one of the uh, great mystery existing in this planet uh, change or impermanent and we don't know how use change and the change make we are suffering and make we have look make we are suffering but we know how to use change and the change is just energy Change is a potential. Change is a possibility. But may, many people always don't, first of all, they're against the change. And the second, they don't know how to use change. And the third, they have a change, but they don't know how to use. Therefore, I try to teach people, say, is uh, uh, the, that's the reason, sorry, I say the power of the uh, change. Is I always say, uh, 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 to we always try to want we always try to change something big, but we don't need to change too big to become change. We only need to change one thing. That's what we need to change ourselves. When you change yourself, is the enough to change all? Therefore, you change enough replace of to change everybody without changing anybody. But the change of others is not enough replace of the change of you. To change yourself is not so difficult. You don't need to really change. You just need to decide. Whatever you decide, changes happen this way. That is the magic of a change. Whatever you decide, you decide to be happy, and the changes happen this way. You de decide to unhappy, and the changes happen this way. Therefore, is the change is so powerful. But many people against the change, try to against the change, and then they're exhausted and they're tired and they're suffering. That's a 
that's very interesting. So you'll be talking about uh, not, o not necessarily how to work with change if it happens unexpectedly in one's life, but also how to be proactive and actually bring change about through making decisions. Correct. Oh. Wow, that sounds like, based on uh, Tulku, uh, what you're saying, that we need in the West. There's a lot of people walking around. They're, they don't have a lot of confidence. They don't know how to make decisions. It sounds like maybe that's the kind of thing that a lot of people really need to hear. Like me and Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it'll be. Uh, so you'll be giving us some pointers on on that on the Thursday night talk, and then on the Friday workshop, you'll be teaching the Lu Zhang Five Elements practice, and then the Salung breath work later on in the day. Is that correct? Is correct. And yeah. and, and and the Salung breath work is uh, part of it is to uh, learn to hold your breath for uh, twenty minutes. <laughs> well, just sorry. Just six kidding. months, Dan. Six, oh, months. six months. Then we can really get some good work in the Navy. Okay. okay. So, okay. Well, let's. Uh, if we don't have any uh, more, more, uh, you know, really. Uh, Tilko, is there anything else you would like to say today? Um, not a example. The Zalong is, uh, is, I like maybe one sentence uh, saying the Zalong is uh, a Zalong example. One, uh, until 25, you more breath breathe in, therefore your body is young. You more breath breathe in until 25. Therefore, breath is so important, our body and our mind, also our spiritual practice, because without the body, we know possible practice anything. Uh, that's the reason until 25, our body somehow naturally young because naturally we breath, breathe in. But after 25 to until 45, our breath more maintain our body. Therefore, we body is more stay flat. Until 25, our body more changing, growing. After 25 to until 45, our body is not so much changing. And after 45, our body start to again changing because we more breath breathe out we not enough breath breathe in therefore breath you see change all our uh, power and all our body forms and also our emotions and all of the, our hormones things therefore it is so important to understand the, how breath is work i think that's what i like to Say yeah, that's all. I think so. That's great. <laughs> you know that uh, sometimes I think, and I know that myself. You know, sometimes I, you know, just through the act of breathing, I can change my entire state, my emotional yeah. well-being, my everything. Just so that's so important. In fact, that's where the word inspiration well, comes from. Hugh, right? you're you're about eighty-five years old, aren't you? And you look so much younger. Well, thanks to uh, good breathing practices, Dan, and of course the immortality <laughs> rings. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, you never know. You, got, you can always have more. So let's tell people how they can find out more and how they can uh, get, uh, get, in t uh, get tickets or whatever it takes to get involved in the August sessions with Talku Lapse. Yes, I think there's uh, been a web page created uh, that we have to, to show on the screen, the Eventbrite. There's been an Eventbrite uh, page created. That okay, people so, uh, can go on to. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so what, where do we tell people? What is the actual URL there for people to check that out? Do we have that? Uh... Yes. Okay, www.tokulopsang-toronto.eventbrite.com. Uh, can we get that up on the screen well, at all? We or? will. We'll okay. we put that in the credits. All right. That's fabulous. Well, that's a yes. long one, and I don't know if everyone's going to get all that. Well, it's the other, it's the easy. There it's is another option as okay. well. It okay. is uh, tokulapsang.org backslash tour plan. And oh. then when you go to the tour plan, you can click on Toronto and uh, find the event there as well. And all the details will be there, such as the, the date, the location, the cost. And uh, Toko, are you still there? Yes. Is he gone? And after people participate in uh, the workshop, they will actually walk away with a daily practice that they can implement right away in their daily lives, isn't it? 
Correct, very much correct. Yes. Well, we're so looking forward to having you in Toronto. And uh, thank you so much for being our uh, guest today. It's been wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Toku, where, where in Brazil are you, by the way? A final oh, question. Oh, yeah. moment, I'm Sao Paulo. <laughs> oh, big city. Ah, oh, Paulo. wow. Big city, mm. okay. Yeah, okay, well, great to have you on uh, Toku Lobsang. And we really hope when you do come to Toronto that we can uh, maybe meet you in person and get you here in the studio and, and do this again in person. That would be awesome. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. So I guess that's it for the show, Rose. So thanks for uh, doing this today, coming in special for this show. And Daniel, you yes. too, for uh, filling in for me. Thank you, thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you, wonderful to be here. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you all uh, next time, right here on thatchannel.com. See you then. Bye for now. Chun Yadam Chun Kandro Churchunde Danizonde Shang Chuart Chum Chum Tonga